Speaking of the climate, variations on a theme, it's time for This Day in History. This Day in History. On this day in history, nearly an inch of snow fell every hour for 16 consecutive hours, starving cattle and ruining ranchers in the American West. No, that extreme weather didn't happen last year, or the year before that, or the year before that. Nope, the worst day of the worst winter in the West took place 131 years ago, long before Democrat hacks ever blamed weather events on unfalsifiable apocalyptic theories. Plains ranchers in Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas knew nothing of the ozone layer or the greenhouse effect or political demagogues seizing upon any natural phenomenon to tighten their grip on power. If they had, surely they would have blamed the unseasonably hot and dry summer of 1886 on, I don't know, industrialization or deforestation or whatever. That unseasonably dry autumn left the range almost completely barren of grass with vulnerable cattle herds wandering around hungry. Worse yet, the snows came early that year, beginning in November and blanketing the plains by January with record snowfall. The cold front even reached the Pacific Ocean, dropping an all-time record 3.7 inches of snowfall in downtown San Francisco on February 5th. Although a warm wind briefly melted top layers of January, that actually turned out worse because the returning cold created a thick layer of ice over the entire ground, making it virtually impossible for cattle to dig through to the remaining grass beneath. Futile attempts on the part of man to predict the weather years out compounded the problem. By the mid-1880s, after several consecutive warm winters, the warmest winters on record, they probably thought, proto-climatologists in the West started overstocking the ranges with cattle while they simultaneously stopped storing away winter feed for a snowy day. Modern climatologists can simply change their models, hide the decline when their predictions don't come to fruition, while political hacks explain away their failures and at the same time double down on their own hysterical claims. The Plains ranchers of 1886 and 1887 weren't so lucky. They had to sit by and watch as their cattle slowly died. Historian Joseph Kinsey Howard recalled, starving cattle staggered through village streets and collapsed and died in dooryards. 5,000 of the animals stormed the outskirts of Great Falls, devouring what little the townspeople had only just planted and crying from hunger as they died. The Great Die-Up, as it came to be called because the American West is very whimsical, killed off millions of cattle, including half of Montana's entire herd. Their carcasses lined the countryside. Hundreds of ranchers fell into sudden bankruptcy. Some modern climate prognosticators are willing to send whole national economies into bankruptcy, even as their predictions continually prove just as inaccurate as Western speculators in the 1880s. But the alarmists keep up their hysterical drumbeat. The science has settled, they say. The solutions are obvious. It's just common sense. We have seen the future, and it works. Right. Also on this day in history, in 1776, Thomas Paine published his pamphlet, Common Sense. In it, he writes, quote, A long habit of not thinking a thing wrong gives it a superficial appearance of being right and raises at first a formidable outcry in defense of custom. Time makes more converts than reason. Paine may have been more right than he knew. In decadent times, common sense is anything but sensible. As the predictions of self-appointed elites prove wrong time and time again, don't be fooled by superficial appearances and do not forfeit your own capacity to reason. 